Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us um, on our webinar today. Uh, really excited to talk to you guys today about New School and the uh, design program here. I'm John Gonzalez. I'm one of the enrollment specialists here at New School. Um, and the, I'm with Elena Pacenti. Uh, just so you know, job. hi, I pronounced your name right. Um, just so you guys know what this webinar is going to be like, um, Elena is going to share a lot of exciting things about the program. Um, we'll also go over the application process with you guys, let you know a few more exciting things that are coming up with New School, and then open it up to a Q&A session. So you'll actually be able to ask questions throughout this time, and then at the end, we'll go ahead and answer those. All right, so we're excited to have you join us. I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Elena and she'll share some information about our design programs. So. Thank you, John. All right. Welcome, everybody. Happy Monday uh, evening. I don't know if you're connected from uh, here somewhere in the uh, in US or from the world, but uh, here is um, Monday afternoon. So my name is uh, Elena Pacenti, and uh, my role at New School is the Dean of the Design, the School of Design. Um, it, uh, my department um, foresees three design programs, uh, interior architecture and design, product design, and media design. And we're gonna, I'll, I'll walk you through all the design programs and how we work a new school briefly because we don't have uh, a lot of time. And, uh, and then we will accept your, your questions. Um, so first of all, just a few, a couple of words about New School. Um, welcome uh, on the slide to see uh, our president, Marvin Malika. Uh, that is um, uh, a very uh, important uh, leader for our, for our community. As an architect with a lot of an impressive experience in uh, education and in the field uh, of education of architecture and design, he brought a lot of energy to the campus uh, to, to, for, because he's an expert of all the design thinking. And he wrote incredible books about that. And he really was able to connect the old campus without, within the same philosophy and promoting a, a very innovative way of looking at architecture and design. Our philosophy is really rooted in design thinking though, and uh, we focus on preparation for practice as one of our main pillars. And of course, there's no other way of teaching design than, than or learning design than designing. So our uh, philosophy at the school is to teach design with the project-based learning activities. That basically means that uh, we have uh, a uh, lot of design studios that are where you develop the projects against uh, together with the um, classes that you follow to get your knowledge. Um, the mission is to nurture and inspire design mind and students. As I said, we have two schools. One is school is the architecture and construction management and the School of Design, which I am the dean, as I said, um, includes uh, product design, interior architecture, and media design. So three undergraduate programs. Um, we are uh, accredited with the uh, regional uh, WASC accreditation, and we are, as you will see, globally ranked, and we won a lot of prizes uh, in, in the design arena. Uh, we have uh, in our curricula are, are built uh, upon four educational pillars. Uh, the first one is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, preparation for practice. So we teach design, not theoretically, but uh, only, but just to, to be sure that our students can have uh, immediately an active role in design firms after, after the years spent with us. Um, human welfare, uh, we really believe that we design for human beings and for the, for the welfare of human beings. So we design to improve people's lives. And that include also environmental empathy. That means that, that we, we respect the planet as one of the, of the resources that give us quality of life. And urban engagement or community engagement that is basically one of our um, important pillars and, and one of the th the ways we, we work because you'll see we work with real communities with real industries with real projects all the time 
um, we are globally connected. This is a very important point to, to underline because uh, it's, it's visible not only from the diversity of the student population, we have a lot of uh, nationalities among our students, but also for the diverse uh, body of um, faculty and, and staff. And I am the living proof, I am, I am Italian 100%, I joined the new school um, at the end of 2013 from Domus Academy in Milan, where I've been working for uh, more than 16 years. And indeed, as you'll see in a little bit, the School of Design has been uh, founded in partnership with Milan. So we have also a lot of study abroad opportunities because we value the importance of traveling and studying abroad. It's very important for designers to develop a view that goes beyond what we are used, beyond what we are comfortable with, and uh, observe people, um, habits, and behaviors, and observe diversity to get inspired. We are career and industry focused. Uh, as, as I said several times, uh, we really work with industry uh, during the, the course of study, and we also support students in finding job. We are doing pretty well. Our students are placed, more, most of the 90%, 88% right now of students is placed um, right up, um, after graduation in uh, important firms locally and not only, and even internationally. Where are we? We are in San Diego. Um, I, if you're not familiar with San Diego, well, it's a nice place to be. Uh, uh, and of course, as also a place where a lot of innovation and energy, uh, a lot of innovation is happening. Uh, we are in a specific area of San Diego that is called uh, East Village. And it's uh, the place where all the design and art innovation and technology innovation happens. And it's very important because it's very urban. Our location is in, in downtown, East Village downtown in the middle of the streets, um, close to design firms and offices, showrooms, where everything related to, to design happens. But let's talk a little bit about design and what the department um, offers uh, for, for in, in our specific, in our programs. So first of all, we talk about um, design as not only uh, as something that is, uh, you know, uh, as our creativity or enhance our possibility of uh, designing and being um, creative and artistic. Design is a very important asset for business, for companies, and for uh, civic uh, and, uh, and community innovation right now. So, as you can see from, this is just one of the chart of the, the thousands that you can find in literature, on magazine and newspapers about how well uh, companies who are design driven and where the, the study innovation by using designers are doing in business compared to the ones who don't use design or use design just at the end of the process. So it's very important to understand that design is not only, again, an artistic gesture, but it's something that really helps designing better products and better environments and, of course, better communication. So if, if you think about design and why all these programs are under the same roof, it's because design can be applied to all the visual communication from graphics to media, uh, to the environments, all kinds of environments, and we will see in a minute uh, what we do, um, what, what does interior architecture covers, and to products. It means about all the products that, that surround us, all the products that we live with, from furniture to, to the technology, to the, the bottle of water that we use every day, have to be designed, and have to be designed in a way that affects possibly less possible the environment and, and improve the, the life of human beings. So that's where the discipline and the way the discipline are all connected and, and importantly connected also between this, um, we'll see the study abroad opportunity with, between Milan and San Diego. So why studying design at New School? Uh, when we started the design programs, again, in collaboration with, uh, with Damos Academy in Milan a year ago, 
uh, we actually uh, thought about connecting the global vision of design, meaning global in the sense that we bring together lots of different perspectives about design from countries in which design is very advanced, has been uh, leading companies for lots of years to the most innovative field where design can be applied that is, that is California. As I said uh, a minute ago, uh, San Diego is a very effective, proactive place right now where a lot of innovation is happening. Startups and businesses are moving to San Diego as a place where innovation can happen. Um, the industry partnership is one of the, of the characteristic of how we work in this place. You see that we have companies working with us um, during uh, the, the, the studio project, within the studio project, we go outside, we visit, we learn not only in the school, but also outside. And also we have uh, the study abroad opportunity in Milan that helps this idea of developing a, a global um, vision of design and then not only based on what happens in the US. Let's start from uh, product design. Um, uh, product design is a program that entails the design of industrial product. We don't call it industrial design because uh, we believe that nowadays products evolved from uh, uh, industrial product to, to digital products. So normally uh, product design is, an, is a way of uh, um, including a lot of the new, new, newest generation of products. But yes, in product design, we design everything that goes from uh, um, a simple object like a plastic bottle to um, an Apple computer, iPhone, or a wearable technology that we uh, use when we go to, you know, for, for sport or practice. Uh, this is a matrix that shows that the design sequence, um, sorry, the program sequence in the fourth year that include three quarters of full-time um, load and uh, but we also accept transfer students uh, so if you are interested in starting in winter uh, we can accommodate um, the, the students for for a winter start sorry there's a little bit of technological impasse Right. I'll start by giving you some examples of uh, the project that we do with companies. Uh, this is a, a, an example of a project we did with Sueño, a startup in the area of uh, uh, Encinitas, where we basically um, uh, designed some storage units for specifically for a dorm. So for Places where young, for younger generation, this is the brand. The brand is really targeted to, to younger generation and is really based on the, surf, the surfing, the surfing and, and the street culture that is very strong here in California and has strong graphics and strong language. And we designed um, these um, uh, solutions. This is an example of a project of a student. Uh, there was um, uh, this, this uh, storage unit to, for desks for all the technology that we use every day. This was an example of a storage solution for, for the wall based on the graphics of the company. And this is an example of a project we did with the Sound United that is a company um, based in uh, Northern California, uh, sorry, in Northern County here in San Diego that basically developed technological um, sound technology products. And this is a design of a clip, a student design a clip that through the new technologies of uh, uh, directed sound can actually bring you the same quality of sound directly in your ear without a lot without uh, the need of wearing headphones. Imagine how cool it is when you ride a bike or a motorbike and you're not you're listening to your phone or your music, but not isolated you know, from the from the music from the noises uh, and and the streets. And this is another example of uh, 
a product in the same area of technology or sound technology for a different company. This was specifically, uh, we gave a brief that was uh, for a loudspeaker specifically for kitchen room, um, for a kitchen, sorry, and, and for uh, hearing sound while cooking. So of course this is waterproof. And this is an example of activities that we do when we go outside in the industry and this is Nissan Design Center here in America. We, uh, we did some workshop with them, specifically with the CMF group, that is uh, Color, Material and Finishes, um, where um, we developed some, uh, some uh, um, studies on color and materials. I don't know if you're familiar, but color and materials in, in the industry, in automotive industry and in other industries is very important. This is a profession per se. This is an example of a more advanced project, like end of third year in which basically we developed a, a system. So everything started from the design of uh, that little vehicle that you see uh, on the bottom right, and that is meant to be, to, to transport people to hospitals in areas in which the streets are not uh, working, or you have really this um, difficult land and in, in very poor areas. The students um, conceived not only the vehicle, uh, but also the system uh, that allowed this, um, this, these vehicles to be distributed in the area or in, in these poor areas and connected to motor bicycle. Um, so they, they to, to act as an as a Uber for uh, rescuing people when, when, when there's a need. So it's a very interesting way of thinking, and this is what's going, what's happening in, in the design area and in industry reality, that is connecting the products with the system and thinking about the overall aspect. And this is how innovation happens. And, and if you think about what's going on in, in the Silicon Valley uh, with the, the most famous uh, companies and businesses, Airbnb and and, uh, and Uber, etc. This is exactly what design thinking is, is all about. What are the career opportunities for product design, who studied product design? Of course, more traditional industrial designers, so um, we basically doing products and, and the manufacturing and, and production processes. Uh, this is one of the aspects that our program uh, covers concept designer, but also user interface designer, user experience designer. As I told you, uh, we, we develop design uh, knowledge for interactive products and digital products, so it's a very important part. And this is where most of the jobs are, especially in, in the Northern California area and abroad. Um, design researchers, if you look at what normally uh, IDEO, FROG, the big international design studios look for, they look for design researchers because they develop a lot of research for their clients before even starting the, 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 to, to design solutions. But of course, if someone is crazy for CAD or for pre-rendering, CAD stylists are always um, very well uh, researched in the market. CMF designers, design manager, and of course, a uh, lot of our students open their own uh, companies even after studying because this is another thing that nowadays is very possible through Kickstarter and all these new uh, platforms. You basically can create your own product line and, and, and sell it and, and you go with it. And if you are lucky you you make money much faster than the, how it happened to us older generations let's go to interior architecture and design and interior architecture and design is also a four-year program uh undergraduate program um that is based on three quarters of uh, of full study of full-time study it's uh, um the reason why we call it interior architecture and design is that we don't cover just the design of environment uh, in terms of uh, uh, finishes and, and furniture and, and we just, we, we really focus on the architecture of the interior environment. What does it mean? It means that nowadays interior architects and designers designing together with architects 
from the very beginning of a new project because understanding how the new project works not only as a, as a as the, the the construction but in, in the interior the way that people use it is as important as the construction part um, indeed the project the program doesn't focus only on traditional interior design fields such as re residential or houses so interior designers nowadays don't not only design houses for you know clients private clients or real estate but they are very much um, employed into all kinds of commercial public uh, environment we focus uh, focus heavily on commercial environments from hospitality to to workspaces to retail to all where all the kind of places where the market of uh, and the design firm architecture and design firm are working nowadays so this is an example of course as you can imagine within the program we start from the simplest um, spaces towards the most complex uh, it can happen that in fourth year you design an airport and it's not simple i understand and a lot of complexity but a lot of uh, possibilities of really improving uh, the, the, the quality of the experience of people. So these are examples again of uh, um, environment or projects that we did. This is a second year project of the restaurant. Um, in San Diego, the, 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 the hospitality specifically for restaurants is booming and that's where all the money for um, uh, for the market of the interior and architects is going, um, so we we take real um, uh, restaurant formulas and, and managers. We work with them to understand how that what does designing a restaurant, for instance, entails, and it's not just a pure decoration exercise. So we start on how, what kind of experience, what kind of user experience, what kind of kitchen and cuisine and, and what kind of, uh, um, of um, um, restaurant that you really want to, to, to build from the service aspect. Indeed, um, imagine uh, when, when, when you design a, a restaurant, you don't, we don't expect students to become expert of each environment they work on. But by going, for instance, we were, are in a, in a restaurant, in a real restaurant while it's is, uh, is, um, uh, in construction, and by seeing real commercial kitchen and real, uh, you know, back of the house space, you really understand what the complexity without um, the need of, of, of studying for a for lot of time to try to understand specific codes on how things work. So it's very important, again, this contact with real life, with industry, with, with, with people to, to really be able to embrace the complexity and the beauty of what designing a space like that is. This is an example of also a second year project about a co-working space. I love talking about um, these, these projects because um, it's the co-working space is a new category, new typology of space per se. So it's really very um, easy to understand that in order to design a, a co-working space, you have to understand what it is and work with the, uh, the, the, the companies and, and the real space to understand um, how, where to start from. So this was a project of four years ago where in San Diego there were just two co-working spaces and we worked with one of them and, and we really worked on a real location to understand uh, what would have been the, their second location. And the students not only tried to understand what was the service and how the service was really based. So how many desks, is it a shared desk? Is, what is a co-working space? But they also added the identity, the identity of this place that is um, how really, what kind of people to attract, what kind of uh, additional services you can offer, what kind of atmosphere. 
So from programming, we go to design, and this is an example of someone who designed the same co-working space, uh, but thinking more of a club, while other students were thinking more of creating like a, a, a lively area, more like a, a hospitality area. This is an example of a more uh, advanced project we did uh, towards the fourth year of study, together in partnership with uh, with Gensler in uh, in uh, Newport Beach and uh, where the instructor was coming from, and uh, we we helped uh, well we we simulated the design of uh, the reception, the lobby, and the the restaurant areas and a suite for a, for a resort. Um, there was an interesting project because it, it was a resort for Quicksilver, as you know, is Quicksilver is a brand for surfing goods and uh, the, the the resort uh, was so was meant to bring the identity of quicksilver but it was built in uh, in the pan desert so no water um, the students did a great job to imagine what the space uh, would have looked like and the exercise was really powerful for them to understand how to really dialogue with all the architecture side of the firm in when something like that happens. So the two aspects, the, the real identity and, 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 and quality of spaces of, of, the, um, of the resort and the master plan live together from the beginning of a project like this. Another project we um, always do towards the end of the, 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 the program of study is designing for healthcare, where there's an, another very important market for interior architects right now, because healthcare hospitals need uh, us to improve uh, the, the quality of, uh, of life of patients and families, but also to improve the, the way nurses and doctors work. And it's very interesting to see that Mm, through evidence-based design to ask to understand really how the environment affects human being that you can design considering and, and aiming at improving the healing process for patients to reduce the number of mistakes for doctors etc it's a very interesting project every year we do work with um, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, design firm who, special, who are specialized in, in this area to learn directly from them. And it's very interesting because we ask the student to, to start from the patient room and out and to understand how you can affect, you can really design a new building from inside out and really improve the quality of, of uh, life of, uh, again, patient. And, and So what are the career opportunities nowadays for interior designers and architects? Of course, as residential. Uh, as I said, commercial spaces are, um, are, are very much the, the, you know, the, the typology where you can make a difference and you can improve the quality. And retail, uh, imagine how you know, uh, the, the different brands uh, need designers to create their own branded experiences in the shops. Uh, this is a huge area. Uh, one of our very, fir very first instructors in, in interior uh, had worked for Starbucks for, for five years just to design the Starbucks experiences at different locations. Um, exhibit designers or temporary or trade show or, sh or temporary showrooms, there's a lot of work in that area too. Event designers, environmental designers, space planners, and, and, and the list can continue forever. Let me jump on media design, and I hope to, to, to conclude slightly in, in a, some minutes so that we can leave room for your questions. Media design, what does media design cover? Uh, media design uh, is also a four-year um, program. I, I didn't mention so far that the foundation year, year one, that you see in this chart, is shared for the most part by all programs. This is a very important point because that means that foundations, we really provide design foundations in a way that um, 
students of all the different disciplines can understand each other and share the common grammar and language of what design is all about because there's a lot of connection between these different fields as you as you see immediately and also in, in the professional life, you don't work in isolation. Designers work with other designers and architects all the time. And that's important that we understand each other. So aspect of media design or graphic design, such as typography, page layout, visual communication, storytelling, are aspects that are essential for all the other designers. So the first, the first year is mostly in common and it also allows student enrolling in this, the first year to change uh, seamlessly between programs if they change their mind without losing any credits. That is a very important part of this. You know, sometimes you start a program of study convinced that you really want to do something. And then after a year, you realize that no, you don't want to do the interior. You want to really do the products or vice versa. Or, you know, and that's a very important aspect of uh, being again teaching design in a very connected way and we also during the other year we we keep the student connected um through it, between between and among programs so uh, media design has, has won a lot of uh, of uh, prizes as well in different areas from brand identity to uh, advertisement or interactive media here there's a i guess i hope it starts it doesn't there's a little video of one of these um prizes that we won uh some years ago The students, as you see from the pictures, the students and the international students uh, designed a little movie, uh, a shop, a sub motion animation of a few seconds, in which, like you see right now, there was a campaign. There was a campaign uh, against the. Uh, um, smoking I guess and she collected the ashes of the cigarettes from her husband and she created this a, a very nice illustration in which the the lung becomes a coughing well it's a little bit uh, sad but it's you know is to try to convince people to stop smoking and she won a, a national an award that is a pretty Adi award that is a pretty uh, important um, prize uh, we cover from, uh, as I mentioned, so from, from basic graphic design to brand identity and communication. So that means, of course, creating identities for, for places, for all kinds of brands. This is an example of a brand for a restaurant that we, a student did uh, in second year and uh, um, or for, for environment, for, for, for all kinds of businesses. And then uh, we move to um, advertisement and of course for we, we, we do all of this for all the different media if you think about that for a second communicating in the past was communicating through traditional media such as you know newspaper TV and and nowadays we communicate in the, or businesses communicate in a completely different way through channels that weren't existing uh, years ago and and uh, most of all we really do a lot of work as as media designers on uh, website app and all all the all those kind of digital interfaces so um we move from uh, from brand identity advertisement to interaction design user experience and that's where we work a lot with with product designers as well because the two fields somehow sometimes are really uh, blurring what kind of opportunities again from graphic designers uh, digital production artists motion graphic designer user experience or ux designer interactive designer art director creative director branding expert 
All, all of these is under one roof that is the media design program. I hope I gave you an idea. And if, if you think that this is uh, what you really want to study, um, let me tell you a few information on how this happened. All right. <laughs> so I get to share about this part, um, the enrollment process. So like I said before, I am I'm John Gonzalez. I'm one of the enrollment specialists here. I get to work with students through the application and enrollment process. There's a whole team of us. Um, so I just wanted to take some time to go over with you guys. What would be your steps now that you have this information if you want to move forward here? Um, well, the first thing would be to begin the online application. It's online. It takes about five to ten minutes to get done. It's really quick. And then upon completing that, you'll be assigned an enrollment specialist. So myself, one of my colleagues, and then we'll guide you through the remaining steps, which are listed on the screen. You see the pay the online application fee, that's $75. All those students who attend events like an open house, we'll mention, or a design jam, which we'll talk about that in a second too, or even coming to a webinar, you get the application fee waived. So that's $75 you get to keep in your pocket. Um, you would also submit your high school or college transcripts. If you're a college student, that's every college transcript, everyone you've attended, you need to see those. And we look for a minimum GPA of a 2.5, cumulative. Now, if you fall a little below 2.5, you're not out of the running. You would just have to do an additional step, which is just completing an appeal letter. And an enrollment specialist can talk to you about that information as well. And then your statement of purpose. You want to know more about you, what your career goals are, why you want to do this. You know, hopefully we can have that conversation over the phone or in person, but we also want to see that on paper so we can submit that to admissions. Now, if you are a transfer student seeking advanced placement, a portfolio is needed. Um, recommended for freshmen, though not required. Um, and then also, if you're an international student, we'll need the TOEFL or the IELTS. Uh, we also have an international student enrollment specialist here who works with all of our students through those specific details. A couple of things um, to know is that it's not too late to apply for this upcoming winter quarter. Um, that starts January 8th, so you definitely want to get your documents in as soon as possible, so get that process started uh, immediately, and one of us can start uh, helping you work through that whole process. If you are a fall 2018 student, so maybe you want to start in the fall of next year, we have a very important deadline coming up this Friday. It's our early action scholarship deadline. That is this Friday, which means you have to start the application, get all these documents in by the 15th, and on top of all that, you get a $1,000 scholarship for next year. So you don't want to miss out on an easy opportunity to get some scholarships to help you pay for your education here at New School. So we want to make sure that you guys knew about that. Now, um, let's say you are a high school student and want to even know more about our design programs here. We have design jams. We actually have one coming up this Saturday. So there are workshops for free for high school students who want to know more about design. Um, they're great workshops. Uh, we usually have them led by a professor or an industry professional um, and we'll have food there. Other high school students will be able to design with you. It's a great time. It's really fun. We'd love to have you stop by. You would just RSVP online. You can also contact myself or anyone in enrollment if you want to know more about it. Um, we definitely wouldn't want you to miss out on that. On Saturday, we're going to design an app for your phone. Yes, app design. So you don't want to miss out on that. All right. And then I believe our next slide is about financial aid. So this is a quick overview about cost. Tuition for this program is $6,929 per quarter, three quarters in a year. Um, and then there are fees and there's a total. Now it's really important to know that that total is a flat rate. That's before any kind of scholarships, financial aid has been applied. We have a phenomenal um, financial aid department here that does work with families and students through the process to see what opportunities for aid are out there for students and what you might qualify for. So uh, we definitely love to have those conversations over the phone or in person is really preferred. That way we get to meet the student, meet the family, get to know what your guys' concerns are, any needs, things like that, and we can walk through those things together. So uh, if you want to talk to a financial aid representative, definitely reach out to us and we can get you in contact with someone there. So we really love having those conversations with students. We understand it's a really big conversation. And so definitely reach out to us so we can set that up really soon here, okay? And then this is just my contact information. That's me. Um, and that's my number. You look my, alike. Yeah, yeah. I look exactly how I do in that picture. Um, and once again, John Gonzalez, a Roman specialist. That's my number and my email. You can contact me directly with any questions, concerns you might have. Uh, we do hope to work with you guys through the process really soon here. Uh, we hope that this whole entire webinar was informative. 
um, and you guys got all the information you needed. Um, any questions that we have here? It looks like we kind of covered most of what questions were asked. Um, yes. So we might be in a good spot there. Um, but is there anything else you wanted to add just for them to know leaving or? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, some of the questions we received were when do you start the winter quarter? The winter quarter starts in January 8th, as John said. Mm -hmm. Um, if you in, if you really want to apply for um, a winter start, we need to review your transcript in case you have taken design classes in other institutions or colleges, or we want us and we want to see your portfolio. So you need to prepare this kind of documentation mm -hmm. as soon as possible. But also for freshmen, um, we have a kind of a fast. Uh, a track to to join the the class in uh, in fall so uh don't hesitate to contact us even if you are an, a, you don't have any transfer uh, credits from other institution and you really want to start uh, fresh now in any of other program our programs uh, as i said um this the, the the foundation here for us is uh common so uh, for those who really don't they feel like being in the design area but don't know which kind of what kind of design to do, just uh, an opportunity at New School is to, to apply for the program that is most likely uh, or closer to your heart. And then you're always on, in, in time to, to, to change in case you understand that the other disciplines better suit your skills and, and, and creativity. And um, what else? During this, if you if you don't know about design or you're still a, a high nice school student, really visit us. We do these uh, design jams every uh, one, you know, almost every month. Uh, you can find uh, information on our website, and we cover completely different aspects of design. It's a four-hour activities and zone. It's really fun. We work with a with a specialist of each area. We did a stop motion animation once. We did um, color design. We did uh, a game experience. We did, uh, we're gonna do an interior in January 20. We're gonna design for an interior space on, in January uh, 20 that is interior choreography. Mm -hmm. And it's all free. We don't ask for any tuition for participating to these activities. It's really for us to show what it's all about and what kind of education is. Because design education is a very specific kind of education. It's not the very traditional college uh, learning experience in which you sit in a classroom and you've been asked to do quizzes and you know tests and you have to study a lot yes you have to study <laughs> but most of the time we design and it's really about uh doing hands on and and, and project-based activities right so we really would love to see you guys there um or even just visit also the school in general if you ever want to see our campus walk around um we'd love to meet with you you can also meet elena in person um even see our studios and whatnot we just love having students stop by to see it our, our school and in our campus in person so any other question? <laughs> Is there another question? Yes. A question arrived. <laughs> As when is the next open house? When is the next open house? It is January 8th. I believe it's a Saturday coming up. Um, I believe it is January. Yeah, it's, it's a Saturday coming up in January. That's when we'll have our next one. We just had our last one recently. So um, we'll definitely keep students up to date on when the next ones are coming up. But the most recent event coming up, though, is the design gym for high school students. And then we'll have the open house come up real soon. Those are typically in the morning, about 10 o'clock. They run till 2. Those events um, are open houses are great opportunities to also learn from our professors about their programs. We have campus tours. Uh, we have financial aid workshops. All of our enrollment specialists are also there where we can meet with you guys um, and families afterwards as well to really talk through the process with you or hear more from you about your story, things like that. And then we also give a housing tour at the end as well in case you wanted to see student housing. But um, yeah, there are also good opportunities to stop by. Those are also free and you would RSVP online. If you're interested in knowing more about those, um, let me know if you wanna know all the dates for the future ones. You can also reach out to me and I can send those your way as well. Um, be more than happy to help with that. 
And I think that's, that's all the questions we have. <laughs> if you think of any other questions, guys, definitely reach out to us. I can't say that enough. Um, contact me, call me, email me, whatever. We're more than happy to help. We also have a chat service on our website that you can always utilize as well and reach us anytime. Um, but other than that, thank you guys. And in case you have uh, questions for me in mm -hmm. terms of uh, from the, for the academic side of it or more information about how the, what are the classes in each program, what kind of uh, um, activities or what kind of uh, outcomes, what kind of instructors, what kind of... Just ask, reach out to John and he will forward me uh, yeah. your questions. Definitely. I will more than happy to, to answer. You can also look online, uh, look up online to our academic catalog. There's, there's an academic catalog that is published with all the details on, on the programs and the classes description and everything. So Hope we yeah, thanks for, for joining us. And, we answer uh, <laughs> all the questions and we gave some useful information. Yep. So we hope to see um, you guys in the future. Hope to hear from you guys really soon here. Um, yeah, have a great, super night. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.